Well, he hello, my name is Dr. Eric Hollander, uh, and I'm with the Spectrum Neuroscience and Treatment Institute in New York and uh, Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Uh, we're, we're hosting the uh, International College of Obsessive Compulsive Spectrum Disorders uh, this week in association with the American Psychiatric Association. And we have uh, international experts on uh, OCD and related conditions here. And it's a great pleasure for me to introduce Professor Martin Figuier from the University of Amsterdam. Um, and he, his program is probably the top program in the world in terms of uh, deep brain stimulation. And you've also done a lot of very interesting uh, conceptual work looking at obsessive compulsive disorder as, a, as an addiction. Uh, so let's start with a deep brain stimulation first for obsessive compulsive disorder. Can you tell me a little about what that is? Uh, so deep brain, brain stimulation involves uh, implanting one or usually two electrodes in a deep brain structure, one of the sub subcortical structures usually, uh -huh. where you can then modulate a brain activity that is supposed to be pathological in the disorder. So it's been done in uh, Parkinson's disease and other movement disorders and over the last uh, 15 years it has also been tried in psychiatric disorders, most notably uh, obsessive compulsive uh, disorder. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a type of surgery, so, it's, yeah, so it's, how does that work? So, um, so the neurosurgeon implants uh, the electrodes, uh -huh. uh, this, this, this uh, happens in, in one day, so the next day a patient is, is, is ready, so there's an electrode being implanted, it's being connected with a wire that goes through a neurostimulator, a uh -huh. battery, that's placed under the chest, so uh, similar to a pacemaker and that mm -hmm. delivers constant current to these two electrodes. Mm -hmm. And then you have a remote control, so after the patient leaves the hospital, comes back after a week, and then we switch the electrodes on, because mm -hmm. the brain has to come to, to rest, and then we switch it on and we can modulate brain activity in these electrodes with this remote control. Mm -hmm. And where do you place the uh, electrodes? Uh for obsessive compulsive disorder. So there's various targets, so to be called. Uh -huh. uh, in uh, the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, but also in Germany, we use the nucleus accumbens as our target. Uh, but for instance, in France, they use the, the subthalamic nucleus uh -huh. as their target. And then in the US, there's groups targeting the ventral striatum. Now, if you look, for instance, at the differences between those ventral striatal targets uh -huh. and the nucleus accumbens are actually quite close. The STN is a, a little bit further away, right? But still, it's part of the uh, uh -huh. uh, same network. Uh -huh. And what does the nucleus accumbens uh, do? What are that particular region of the brain? What's it involved in? So the nucleus accumbens is an important uh, structure. It's part of the of the of, of reward network. Uh -huh. It comes online whenever someone is anticipating something that might potentially be rewarding or beneficial. And it's, it's a known structure from, for instance, addiction, uh -huh. where taking too much drugs sort of hijacks the nucleus accumbens, which constantly anticipates a, a new drugs or new rewarding substances. Uh -huh. And we uh, have an ID that may also be involved in uh, compulsivity uh, as uh, people with comp compulsive behaviors they don't seem to be able to switch uh, uh, from these compulsive behaviors towards natural healthy rewarding behaviors uh -huh. so, so we think they're stuck in uh, compulsively using well let's say those reward structures uh -huh. So what's the typical clinical picture that you might see uh, after the uh, electrode is implanted and you start the stimulation? And what type of symptoms in OCD get better and what's the time course in terms of the response? Uh, it depends. So when you switch the, the, the electrodes on, you see very fast mood changes, uh -huh. also changes in anxiety and changes in motivation, which talks to the idea of the nucleus accumbens being a reward circuit, uh -huh. also having connections with the amygdala uh, involved in anxiety regulation. Mm -hmm. So what we see straight away is 
uh, anxiety changes, mood changes, and changes in motivation. It, it is as if the patient becomes aware again of his or her natural environment. Some patients, they start to notice um, um, the, the room around them, or they, they literally say, I feel the ground under my floor, whereas this was totally overwhelmed by anxiety and, and obsessive thoughts uh, before. Mm -hmm. And then more gradually, uh, within weeks, still months, or sometimes even a year, we see the compulsions uh, diminish. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, for that to happen, we usually need behavioral therapy. So, mm -hmm. so, we, so, so DBS seems to induce a sort of better or healthier mind state, uh -huh. but patients still need a lot of help to uh, get rid of their compulsive behaviors. Uh -huh. But apparently they seem to be able to do now, whereas before this was never successful. Uh -huh. So they actually get more motivated to engage in other kinds of meaningful activities? Yeah, so can. what have you seen people get involved in after uh, this kind of treatment? Um, well, that's interesting. Most of, for, the, for most of them it's quite a shock uh -huh. to, uh, to enter a new life without all these compulsive behaviors because they've been so preoccupied with, with them that it's, uh, that it's sometimes very difficult uh -huh. for them to, to take up a new life. Uh -huh. um, but interestingly, um, uh, we see uh, not only uh, compulsive behaviors disappear, but sometimes also uh, s certain addictive behaviors like, like smoking or overeating. Huh. Uh, so they seem to become motivated also to overcome other behaviors. And then it's up to them and up, up to, to us and, 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 and our, our guidance of them uh, how, uh, how they, uh, what, what they do with this, with this new situation. Some uh -huh. patients, they, they take, take up their old life again. We have patients literally saying to us, I, I feel like I'm, I'm my old self again. But other, other patients need a lot of help with that. Uh -huh. So their, their motivation to engage in addictive behavior like cigarette smoking or binge eating might decrease, but that their motivation to engage in other kinds of activities might increase? That might sometimes be the case. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I must say that um, um, we, we, we try and use the same treatment now also for addiction. We've actually done uh -huh. two patients with heroin and cocaine addiction. Uh -huh. and what we see is that it seems to be quite successful on uh, heroin addiction, but not on cocaine addiction. Uh -huh. And then in Germany, uh, they've also treated uh, alcohol addiction with the same target. Uh -huh. So some addictive behaviors seem to respond really well to, uh, to this uh, sort of treatment. Interesting. Now you've uh, sort of thought of uh, OCD as being like an addiction. So it, in what, in what ways are OCD like uh, an, an addiction? I'm not sure if it's literally an addiction. It's just that uh, the same brain uh, and network seems to be involved, at least oh, there's overlap. Uh -huh. Of course, in addiction, there's always the influence of the actual drug involved, uh, uh -huh. which, seems to invo which seems to affect uh, prefrontal regulation. But at least there's some similarity, uh, for instance, um, um, decreased responsivity of the nucleus accumbens towards natural rewards, whereas uh, there seems to be overactivity in this structure and in this network related to uh, compulsive behaviors. And this is the same what you see in drug addiction. So also drug addicts, they seem to be less able to recruit uh, the nucleus accumbens and the uh, adjacent uh, reward huh. network when facing with healthy uh, rewards, whereas drug uh, activates this uh, circuit heavily. Uh -huh. now we, we usually think of the compulsions as being done to reduce anxiety or discomfort or neutralize the obsessive kind of thoughts, but are you suggesting that there may be some individuals when they give in to the compulsive behavior as an element of uh, reward or reinforcement? But that, that might be the case for some patients, actually uh -huh. some patients that we've seen uh, and that we've also treated with deep brain stimulation, they do tell us that uh, 
and they uh, they, they sometimes feel uh, fulfillment if they complete their compulsions like perfectly, which they uh -huh. are uh, often never able to uh, to, to fulfill. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, uh, so, so yeah, indeed, I think that there may be a, a, a rewarding aspect, but also the fact that compulsions reduce anxiety uh, may also be in a way rewarding in that uh, you're avoiding something negative, you could say, uh -huh. a punishment, uh -huh. and that in itself might also have rewarding aspects. Uh -huh. you know, uh, should everybody with OCD run out and have this uh, deep brain stimulation, or who would be the right patient to receive a treatment like this? So now we, um, so in the Netherlands we've done it in 42 patients now, and I think worldwide over two or three hundred patients have been treated, this is an estimate, and uh -huh. these are only treatment refractory patients. Of course it's still very invasive, it's also very expensive, and so, uh, so we, we, we treat patients only that have had uh, all uh, uh, standard treatments. So they must have had uh, two SSRIs in adequate dosage, they must have had antipsychotic addiction, they must have had clomipramine, and they must have had uh, uh, cognitive behavioral treatment. Uh -huh. So these are people who have usually sought out all of the standard medicine treatments yeah. and yeah. behavioral treatments and have had a lot of uh, various kinds of combination treatments and haven't really improved, right? Yeah. So they must be pretty uh, disabled? Yeah, they're, 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 they're fully refractory and they're also very disabled. Most of them have a Y box of over, a Y box score of over 30 uh -huh. and are indeed severely disabled. Uh-huh. Okay. So uh, what are some of the points that you'd like to sort of emphasize about uh, deep brain stimulation in obsessive compulsive disorder? Or what are the, the things that uh, our viewers uh, should know about? Well, I think it's a, it's a great treatment for, for treatment refractory and severely ill uh -huh. patient with, with obsessive compulsive disorder where uh -huh. over, over at least 50% um, improvement in these patients that have been completely uh, refractory before. Uh -huh. I think that if you look at the, at the networks that are changed with deep brain stimulation, it talks to, to the idea that there's, uh, there's a change in, 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 in motivational circuits, which might also be helpful for uh -huh. addiction and other uh, sort of compulsivity uh, disorders. Mm -hmm. And then the last part that I think is really important to realize is that you need a huge multidisciplinary team to treat these patients because it doesn't end uh, just with switching the electrode on. That's uh -huh. actually where the story begins. Uh -huh. you have to, where you have to add cognitive behavioral therapy but also guidance uh, into a healthy uh, life. Uh -huh. So you found uh, sort of good sort of complementary components of cognitive behavior therapy with the deep brain stimulation? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, it seems like our understanding of OCD has really changed. You know, we used to think of this in psychodynamic terms. It seems like we understand a lot better the underlying brain structure that's involved in that now we can sort of intervene by uh, really targeting specific areas and mm -hmm. changing the circuitry and having a pretty amazing uh, effect in these very refractory patients. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks very much for uh, coming here. So again, it's Dr. Eric Hollander at the Spectrum Neuroscience and Treatment Institute and Albert Einstein College of Medicine. And I'm here with uh, uh, Martin Figuet from the University of Amsterdam, who's going to be uh, talking uh, about uh, a range of things, including deep brain stimulation at the International College of Obsessive Compulsive Spectrum Disorders. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Okay.